What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and I wanna start off and say this. If you primarily shoot photos or you shoot more photos than you do videos, then the Sigma art lenses for the Sony FE mount are definitely some of the best lenses your dollar can buy. And that's not to say they can't be dedicated video lenses. The Sigma lenses use its mechanical focusing, giving you finer manual control as you rotate the focus ring, which a lot of filmmakers would prefer because it's helpful in situations where you wanna do a smooth and slow focus pull from one object to another. Compared to the Sony Zeiss lenses, those are focused by wire, which means the focus ring here doesn't actually control the focus, but sends a signal to the camera to tell the lens how to shift focus, thus giving you inconsistent results if you have to manual focus. But where these lenses shine lies in the fact that their autofocus is extremely accurate consistent, and silent. So if you're at a toss between two lens system, it's going to depend on the lens's capabilities and your style to see which one you match up with. With that said, let's take a look at how well the video autofocus works with the Sigma art lenses. After testing out six different art lenses, I can tell you the results are quite similar across the ranges. The Sigma lenses all do a great job grabbing focus on a subject, as seen here, the Sigma Art 50mm f1.4 was grabbing focus on my face as fast as the Zeiss 50mm f1.4. While it's not a direct counterpart, the Sigma Art 24mm f1.4 was keeping up fairly well with the Zeiss Bodice 25mm f2, whether it was at f1.4 or matching it to f2. By the way, in these test scenarios, we let both parties focus to the background first before I pop up into frame. However, you might have noticed how choppy the Sigma lenses pulled focus, almost like it's stuttering and struggling to achieve focus. Whereas the Sony lenses does a much smoother focus pull. It's a lot more apparent when we compare the Sigma Art 85mm to the Sony G Master 85 and the Sigma Art 135 to the Zeiss Bodice 135. Also, I want to point out how the weight of these two gargantuan Telephoto Sigma art lenses drag one of the cameras down based on the available headrooms in these frames. Next, we did a tracking test comparison. Let's take a look at the Sigma art 20mm f1.4 at 1.4 versus the Zeiss Bodice 18mm f2.8 at f2.8. Immediately, you'll see the Sigma art lose focus as I walk back versus the bodice doing a fantastic job keeping me in focus and remain focused as I'm walking towards the camera. Okay, all right, it's not exactly a fair comparison. The Sigma art obviously was at a much shallower depth of field. So here's another test with the Sigma art 20 millimeter at f2.8, and it's doing a slightly better job, but still lost focus a few times. Let's take a look at two direct counterparts, the 35 millimeters both at 1.4. And you'll notice even at 1.4, the Zeiss did a superb job keeping me in focus the entire time. And we're getting similar results with the 50 millimeter 1.4 and the 85 millimeter 1.4. The Sony and Zeiss lenses just do a better job tracking and keeping a moving subject in focus. Moving on to a couple of frequently asked questions. Would I still use the Sigma art lenses for gimbal work? Now, it's definitely possible to pull off some awesome shots at a 1.4 aperture with the gimbal, but know that it's quite difficult to shoot that wide open when you're moving. Personally, I find using the Sigma art lenses on a gimbal way too heavy, even if you have something like the DJI Ronin S or the Crane 2 that can balance it. Honestly, f1.8 or even f2 is good enough for me. The Zeiss 55, the Bodice 18, and 25 have been our three favorite gimbal lenses for wedding films just because they work so well with a light gimbal like the Crane Plus, and the video autofocus is incredibly reliable. Moving on to the next concern, video autofocus noise. Now it's not completely silent, but it's a lot more controlled. You can still hear the noise if you held the lens up to your ear, but not nearly as loud as the Canon EF mount versions. So now that we understand the capabilities of the Sigma art lenses, we're now going to consider your shooting style to see if these are right for you. Again, if you're shooting more photos than videos, these lenses are going to be the best bang for your buck. In certain situations, the video autofocus on these Sigma art lenses is good enough. Like for instance, shooting YouTube videos like this or talking head style interviews where you or your subject doesn't move as much. But if you don't care about video autofocus, then definitely consider the Sigma art lenses or even steer more towards a dedicated set of Cinema Prime lenses with even finer manual control. 
But if having reliable video autofocus is important to you, then no question about it, go straight for the Sony and Zeiss lenses. Their accuracy and reliability are currently unmatched. If you need help mastering video autofocus, then I got a guide for you. Check out my video autofocus guide for the Sony Alpha cameras, jam-packed with the different focusing modes and features you should use to nail focus for your next shoot. Yes, the video is a little bit old, but the information is certainly not outdated. And because I'll be in Cuba soon, I would do my very best to see if I can get out my comparison between the Sigma Art 135 f1.8 versus the Zeiss Bodice f2.8. If it's out, it should be here on the screen. If not, check out my user experience review on the Zeiss Bodice 135 f2.8. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.